So per the Nintendo uh, Direct Showcase, Xbox gamers of all people were handed quite a blow as dirt was discovered that the Marvel vs. Capcom fighting collection will not be coming to Xbox. This is after it was displayed at the aforementioned Nintendo Direct. And many are like, look, man, it's bad enough that Xbox gamers are now having its showcase crown ripped from them via the Nintendo Direct in the eyes of many. But now this Xbox gamers are upset and they're blaming a multitude of things, but I think their eyes are not on the prize. I think two important factors are being ignored here. Those things are platform viability for smaller titles and platform bottlenecks. And those are the very two things we plan to discuss on the next installment of The Spill, where we talk about the latest and greatest in video gaming news. Buckle your, buckle your seats, because you're going to be in for a, a ride this time. Let's get into it. Yeah. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of PNTS Network. Geeks, Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock Digital Culture, back again with another episode of The Spill. This is where we talk about the latest and greatest in video gaming news. And we talk about those hot topic buttons. The hot topic button topics. Play that fast five times. Hot button topics, rather. Excuse me. And I go on my rant. Well, let's start said rant. Yeah, so we got people that are upset about this latest revelation of Capcom, uh, Marvel versus Capcom fighting collection not coming to the Xbox platform. Like we said, it was um, displayed on the Nintendo Direct. You're seeing excerpts from uh, that showcase that highlights this game. A lot of people cherish this game. It is a cult classic. And it's, it's been synonymous with, with Xbox Play. It's been on the 360 and I believe the OG Xbox as well. So what is going on here? Why is this game skipping Xbox? And more importantly, why do games keep skipping Xbox altogether? Let's first deal with this game and let's talk about platform viability. Let me do this. I want to show you guys something. I want to show you this. This is an article from VGC and it's titled Marvel vs. Capcom fans are angry that the MVC fighting collection won't be coming to Xbox. The compilation will be released on PC, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch. And before we go any further, I just want to say something to you Mensa candidates out there that are like, uh -huh, uh -huh, there's no PlayStation 5 version. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, you do realize that you can play your PlayStation 4 digital games on your PlayStation 5. Cut it out and get a CAT scan. All right. So it continues to read, Marvel vs. Capcom fans have reacted angrily to news that the newly announced Marvel vs. Capcom fighting collection won't be coming to Xbox. The collection was announced during Tuesday's Nintendo Direct and it will be released on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PC, but not Microsoft consoles. Capcom has yet to explain why Xbox players won't be getting the game, but fans took to social media to voice their displeasure with the phrase, no Xbox trending across social media according to IGN. <laughs> All right, here's my thoughts on all when it comes to this particular game. Um, Look, let, let, let's let's just be real here. Let, let's come back down to reality. Let, let's, let's get out of La La Land. We've been trying to do this since last week um, and, and try to break down the people in, in a very civil way at times. <laughs> the Xbox showcase was a, was a good showcase. It was a good one. Um, their best showcase this generation. And I had people in my chat say, this is my top five all time. I, I, I'm not going to argue with that. I think that that's fair for you to put it there. You know what I'm saying? It's where the rhetoric was starting to lean towards. This was the best Xbox showcase ever when we've had Xbox showcases that not only had Bioshock, but had Mass Effect in them. Um, they had uh, Gears when Gears was originally released. I believe the original Fable 2 was in there. Um, and then the almighty blow that really made Xbox a competitor 
on this forefront was when Grand Theft Auto 4 was revealed to no longer be exclusive to PlayStation and it was also coming day and date to Xbox as well. That was huge. There was no bigger, there, there have been no bigger Xbox showcase to date. All right. Doesn't mean that this one still wasn't good, but that is the ceiling right now is that showcase. All right. So I wanted to, we, we tried in a civil fashion, some uncivil, <laughs> uh, to try to pull you back into reality. Now that we feel like enough of you are grounded back in reality, for those that are still stragglers that, that, that have yet to hit Earth's surface, this showcase, as good as it was, changes nothing on the surface. It changes nothing yet. The Xbox still is not a viable platform for developers until we start seeing statistics and NPDs that show that, oh, because of this showcase, people are now have a restored and renewed faith in the Xbox and they're now buying consoles. They're now, you know, going eight nuts over Game Pass. Until that happens, this was just something pleasing to the eyes or people that want to see the some some up and coming video games and something to give Xbox fanboys ammunition on Twitter. That's it. It doesn't change the financial dynamic of what this platform poses to people. People are tired of trying to take one for the team and jump all in on Xbox only to get nothing back in return. Okay. And to double down on what I'm saying, because you guys are probably saying on MM2K, you're just hating. You're just hating like Christopher Dring from GameIndustry.biz. You're talking about there's no return for developers. I want you guys to listen to something. I'm going to shut up and I'm going to play something for you guys that I think extenuates my point. Something on Twitter. Let's go over here and do something like this. Uh, yeah, we'll do something like this. This is a tweet where um, this is from the Friends Per Second podcast where you have um, influencers and creators that have connections to developers um, and then they have something to say in particular about um, what's going but on here how when it comes to video game development and how the Xbox platform is being perceived by video game developers listen and this is indie game developers particularly or those that are developing smaller games we'll talk about the triple a games in a little bit but this is specific on indie games sit back and listen but how much are developers sacrificing in order to prop up that model i don't know the answers to that right interestingly edmund a member of uh, my my team um he we he reached out to about a dozen game makers to ask them like how is you know how are you feeling about publishing your games on xbox and one of the things that came back from a few of those developers was the idea that it's not worth putting your game and they're smaller game makers by the way double a and indie and they're like it's not worth putting your game on xbox unless you have a game pass deal because con xbox consumers are essentially conditioned now to expect their games on Game Pass. Mm. So if you're going to port your game to Xbox and expect to make your money back from sales alone, it's probably not going to happen. It's not worth it. Mm. The ones that Edmund spoke to. Okay. So now that we have that on your radar, right? Now that we can look beyond Christopher Dring, the hater in MM2K, the, the, the feel, the, the, the anti feel creator now that we've gotten that out of the way and we're listening to sensible people that are just cascading information to you from developers hopefully it sinks in this is not a profitable platform for indie developers unless they get some type of rewarding game pass deal and it's not always rewarding it doesn't work out for everybody we've seen instances where that doesn't happen so you could see a situation with even capcom with this smaller title they're not beholden to oh we got to get our game on xbox uh, in order to make it they're, 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 the capcom has been one of the most successful third-party publishers over the past several years they are really model for the industry right now they don't need to be anywhere that is not going to help them out they ain't got to take one for the team simply put if you want to play these games you're going to have to get the platforms where they're at simply put 
they don't need to put this game in game pass because they know that this game is is a cult classic and a lot of people love it so they're not going to sit there and 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 leave anything on the table by putting it on game pass there's not a game pass um uh there's not a game pass deal lucrative enough for said title also wasting the time to porting it to xbox um is not sensible especially when you just heard what they said when it comes to like smaller games that are made by smaller developers even though this isn't a smaller developer but this is a smaller game when it comes to those situations those people pretty much say you know what why even bother okay they say why bother so that's reason number one okay reason number two why games don't come to Xbox is something that we've been talking about here for a very long time, but people again, don't want to accept reality. They don't want to come back to earth and they want to use silly conspiracy theories to double down on these notions because they're like xbox had a great showcase everybody should come now xbox is back i just made a video where i have a podcast where i say xbox is back so that means they're back right despite the fact that xbox has been winning showcases the last few years and nothing has changed for them on paper right and not to take away anything from this show this was a good show this was a standout show. We're going to talk more about that because we do feel like that there are some fanboys out there trying to give the show some hate when it doesn't deserve it, right? We just here want to make sure that how you talk about this showcase is grounded in reality. But there's people trying to give it hate, and that's another video. We'll talk about that at a later time. But this is a showcase. This is not something that moves the trajectory until we see it happen it hasn't moved the trajectory before and based off of what the caliber of what was shown it's it's likely not going to move the trajectory again i will give credit to call of duty alone whether that was advertised in the showcase or not that i feel like is going to move the needle on pc game pass but we're talking about this game coming to console it's coming to pc right Let's check back the article. Yeah, it says that it's coming to Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and PC. It's coming to PC, but it's not coming to, to Xbox consoles. All right. So what I want to do is I want to show you guys one more thing. Okay. So here, here, here's what happened. So let me see here. Okay, now I can pull it up. So someone put out there that black myth wukong um will not be coming to the xbox platform day and day it'll be coming eventually like the, the developers at this point in time are still working on it but it's not coming day and day and so we had someone out here that mentioned that another fanboy was on a podcast and had mentioned that they had a conversation with Sarah Bond and they asked why was it delayed? And they incorrectly say, cause to, to, to the person's credit, all the person said was it was, it, it's not the series as it's business decisions. Now, and they left it as open like that. Now the fanboy gave their interpretation of what business decisions could mean, which I feel like is cockamamie. But to be fair to them, they never said that their interpretation of what that meant was what came out of Sarah Bond's mouth. Sarah Bond is a wordsmith. You have to be working for Xbox. So business decisions could be, look, we can still release this game on the Series S, but the performance is trash. And it's affecting what we do on the Series X. So it's not like we can't release the game, but we, get, you know, dealing with this platform, so much optimization has to go into it because of the bottleneck of the Series S. And we have some some Mensa candidates that don't understand, like when they put out the the minimum specs for um, 
uh, for Black Myth. I think the minimum specs ask for at least 16 uh, gigabytes of RAM. You know what I'm saying? Or system, yeah, it asks for 16 gigabytes of RAM. And the Xbox Series S only has 10. I mean, you make of that of what you will, right? So business decisions, just because she used the word business decisions, it doesn't mean that it doesn't involve the Series S. It could be the business decision that, yeah, we could release this thing. The frame rates will probably be trash. The resolution will probably be inconsistent. And we're making the business decision that because this is performing so poorly on the S that we're not releasing it like this. The, the makers of Black Myth Wukong said a while ago that we're going to be releasing on platforms and cloud services that we feel stand or or up to standard for the game they said this at the they said this years ago and if right now in 2024 they still haven't gotten the optimization up for the series s then they're gonna wait and what is the rush again to the aforementioned fact that the series s and the series x consoles are doing or selling abys abysmally and a, a good showcase doesn't change anything on the surface why wouldn't they? Nobody cares that fanboys is clapping like baby seals over a showcase. Nobody cares. When NPD releases and it shows that Game Pass is going up and that consoles are, are selling better, then they'll care. But no, I'm not going to sit there and waste my time and effort when I could be releasing this on other platforms that are way more lucrative versus this potato that's holding things back. We had the people of uh, Kingdoms Come Deliverance that told us that they had to reduce the scale of the sequel because of the Series S. Nobody cares that you got a showcase and that you're all creamy knuckle now. Oh, oh, oh. Saw a little bit of Fable gameplay, I think. Oh, oh. Nobody cares. Get over it. <laughs> Get over yourselves. That is why games keep skipping this platform. The Series S was a mistake. It was a bottleneck. You guys had an opportunity to push back on it on behalf of the devs. And had it just been the Series X out there, it, 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 things probably would have been better. At least from the development side, it would have been. So you guys are going to be missing out on games, okay? That's simply what's going to happen. It didn't just happen with Wukong. It happened with, with, with Baldur's Gate 3, and it's going to keep happening for the life cycle of this console. So here's the fact of the matter. Xbox, this generation is in a bad way. I give you kudos for the cool showcase, but it will materialize. But will it materialize to more sales on an attractive platform? We've seen nothing to change that dynamic as of yet. Wait for NPDs. Wait for the holiday season. Then we'll see. Xbox users in the meantime, I don't know what else to tell you guys. If, if you're going to stick solely to this platform, okay, it's your choice. But you better buckle up and get ready for holes and gaps <laughs> all throughout this generation as far as games that you're going to get to see and play on that hardware. You better hope that new handheld or streaming box, whatever they're planning on, their next set of hardware, you better hope that comes sooner rather than later, period. Or you're going to have to get you another platform play on that's it from your boy let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below it's like I always say here's what i think but if you did like what i had to say check out the links below the following they'll lead you to geeks cloud dosage on our digital culture until next time have a wonderful gaming day peace